Uh, I'm going to go to this one. Um, warm up and cool down. Uh, what's the best way to warm up and cool down for optimal performance? The reason I have these pictures up here, I went to the Texas versus Nebraska Volleyball National Championship game this past year. And uh, if you think about volleyball, in my opinion, these collars, they have a pretty long warm up. It's pretty long. Um, and uh, so I watched Texas warm up. And they had a, they had a tra trainer out there or somebody leading them in their warm ups. And they were doing all kinds of things I've never seen. I mean, just uh, leg lifts and kicks and, and a lot of stretching and a lot of bouncing for probably an hour and more. Nebraska warmed up the whole time with the ball. They had some sort of ball drill the whole time. They were doing some sort of ball, volleyball activity. And I'm not an expert in this, but Nebraska won. So on a study of one, maybe a more of a functional warm-up of what you're going to be playing could be better. But as far as the panel, do you guys have any thoughts on warm-up and cool down for... I think part of the reason Nebraska won is because they warmed up doing what they were going to do. So it's, think about it, if you're going you're to lift, you warm up with the bar before you put weight on the bar. It's the same thing. If you're going to run, you start out jogging before you start to run. So it's about that functional, functional warm up. You do, but at a lower intensity to get your total body warm. I want my athlete top, not warm. I can too. <laughs> yep. Try to make it dynamic in the beginning and they have to get static and do it at the end. But. Keep them warm, keep them moving. The second part of this question is what about cool down? So two hours of practice. They're done. A game, say it's this they're done with the game or it's done for the day for a tournament. How about suggestions for the coaches on what to do afterwards? I think this is actually the best time to, to stretch your ass after their body has been completely worked and warmed up and the muscles are nice and elastic. So just some dynamic, um, cool down stretches to gradually um, return, return to homeostasis over a period of about five to 10 minutes, I, I think it's probably optimal for uh, getting the body ready to recover from that performance. So then my question for you is, do you think that that's the time to work on greater mobility when they're really still hot? Absolutely, you know, when, the, when there's blood flow going through the muscle, the elasticity is there. Um, the muscles are fatigued, so they're, they're not going to be as resistant to the, the optimal lengthening that you're looking for when you do your um, dynamic post-workout stretching. I agree. Started practice, yeah. should they be sitting around doing some stretching or should it be dynamic or ball handling? Yeah. How about dynamic ball handling? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think there's not much utility in like this pre -game, game sit on the floor stretch stuff. Um, so, your athletes you need to warm them up, get them hot, move into dynamic full range of motion that, that feeds into what you're doing for the day. Like, it drives me crazy to watch people move. They warm up with a movement that is not going to be incorporated in what they're doing and what they're doing. So they're not they're not priming the pump, they're not greasing the groove, they're not getting the proprioception that you need to efficiently, you know, execute the movement. They're not getting that joint system moving through its full range of motion. So I'm like, what why are you doing this? It doesn't feed into what we're doing for the day. And so 
the, the sit on the ground kind of mobility piece for me that is a cool down. That's a cool down. <laughs> and, and I think one of the one of the population that does exactly what you just said they do that like sit around static stretching before their activity are runners. You look at runners, oh, we gotta stretch, and then we gotta run, and then do nothing. And when runners come into my office, they're some of the stiff as a board. So just looking at that population, uh, that static stretching, pre-workout, doesn't do a bit of good. some of that dynamic warm up with the ball, you know, partner or partner stretching, you know, partner activities. So they and then you can have them rotate so they still get time with each each other, but you're still being productive with your time. Which, you know, the more productive you are, the less time you can have you could potentially give them more time to sleep. But I, I do value what you're saying as far as that connection because volleyball is a team sport. I have daughters, they like that connection. If they're they're happy going in, they're gonna be happy during the game. If they're not happy going in, God help you. You know, so I, I think you can do something. You can do like a little kumbaya stretching if you want. Like I, I don't know how bad it is, but you know, I, I do value that. And I think the stretching Dr. Anderson will talk about afterwards. One, two minutes is all you need. Just a couple things. It's, it's come together, do a few stretches. I think it not only prevents injury, it makes you perform better. You can just do a little stretch. You can ask me, you ask John for some things like, hey, what's a couple stretches to do right after? Boom, you bring them in, do little stretches. I, th I found that, in my experience, to be kind of a nice, fun time and maybe a little talk or whatever. But while you're having your post-game talks or celebration or maybe disappointment, you can stretch then. You know, have a team captain do a little bit of stretching while you're doing that. I don't know if that's going to be distracted for that, but, but that's a great point. Like, that psychological togetherness, and good point. Yeah. 